Hello from Auckland Strand Railway Station in beautiful New Zealand. I'm Patrick Hughes and this is Planet Patrick. This is my full length video that traces my journey right through New Zealand on three trains, one ferry and two coaches. We start with the Northern Explorer from Auckland to Wellington, take the Coastal Pacific train along the coast to Christchurch and then cross the Great Divide to reach Greymouth on the Transalpine train. Finally, I take coaches for two days via France Joseph to reach the stunning South Island resort of Queenstown. The check-in area is a converted shipping container. More on the station history in a moment. Good. The last name is Hughes. H-U-G-H-E-S. Sorry, should have a facing forward window seat. A five O. Does that sound Avenue? right? Okay, good. Yeah. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. How are you today? Good. Oh, thanks. Good. Good. Just pop that up there. Yeah. Done and dusted? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Part one is the Northern Explorer, an all day train ride through some of New Zealand's most beautiful scenery from Auckland to Wellington. It starts here in Auckland Strand Railway Station. The platform here dates back to the 1930s and the original Auckland station was replaced by Brito Mart in the city centre around 20 years ago. Since then, Auckland Strand Station became apartments, but in 2015, Platform 7 was refurbished, a new ticket office was created out of an old shipping container, and the station reopened exclusively for the Auckland to Wellington Northern Explorer trains. Now that I'm checked in, let's go on board. first impressions of the seat art it's very comfortable this is a very very long journey so I'm glad about that but I think what's remarkable is the panoramic feel inside the carriage particularly the windows above the luggage racks I'm not sure that there's a recline in the seat though that's something that will work out but there's plenty of leg room a little storage area if I want to do some work, we have this option. I'm going to quickly see if I can buy a coffee before we leave. You go ahead, I've already ordered. I'm surprised there wasn't a lineup for coffee as we're about to leave in about four minutes. Anyway, I've got my cuppa, off we go. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, shortly your doors will be closing, ready for our departure. Kia ora, no mai, hi to mai, and welcome to the Northern Explorer bound to Wellington. My name is Leah, you met me and check in this morning. Emergency exits are located on both sides of the train. Take a moment now to locate your nearest exit. If the train stops, please stay on board unless you are at your destination or you've been advised by a crew that you can disembark. If you ask for Wi-Fi today throughout your journey, if you look to the left and look to the right, you have live scenery. Thank you for joining us on the Northern Explorer today. So this is the viewing carriage, open-sided, which is fun. I'm just glad that the weather is so nice today. When you're inside the carriage, they play a little beep that indicates that something worth viewing is about to come up. I don't know what it is. You can put in your headphones and listen to what, what it is or come outside and hope for the best. To time they've got little announcements. It's about troops. Hello. Here is the bathroom. There's roughly about one per carriage and one of them is for disabled access. It looks pretty clean to be honest with you. There's a toilet here, some seat cleaner and toilet roll over here. 
baby change facilities, which is great to know. Down here is sanitary and rubbish. A sink and a hand dryer. Looks pretty good. This is just the second stop, Hamilton. The perfect place to stretch your legs for a second. I love that so much of the commentary that we're hearing is not white settler commentary, but also stories about the Maori who live in this particular part of New Zealand, who live in this particular part of Aotearoa. I know my pronunciation is terrible. Sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, just a quick operational stop here, just uh, waiting for this freight train to move forward so we can uh, keep passing. the gorge was, but was gorgeous. We'll be arriving into Awakuni Station. For those passengers disembarking at Awakuni, please take a moment now to check around your seats and the coat racks above for any items you've brought on board with you. This train uses the NIMT line, that's the North Island main trunk. But surprisingly, it only goes three times per week in each direction. The rolling stock are DFB locomotives with the Kiwi-built New Zealand AK train carriage. Who knew? Now you do. There's a couple of things I wanted to share with you while we're on this journey together. The Northern Explorer is operated by Great Journeys New Zealand. Lots of travel companies sent out reminders and newsletters, but those that came from Great Journeys were actually helpful. My last email set out the departure and arrival time, both of which I needed to remember, and specified exactly when I needed to check in. I'm traveling in standard class for this trip, so all items of food and drink are extra. In fact, on the Northern Explorer, there isn't currently a business class available. That'll be coming up on one of my later videos with the third trip that I'm doing, the Transalpine. The other piece of advice that they gave me and that actually came true is that there was limited Wi-Fi on board. In fact, there's no Wi-Fi on board at all. And that means we're buying things in the cafe, 
you need to have cash with you because the credit card machine won't always function. No cash? No carrot cake. We've got about three more hours to go to head into Wellington. I hope you'll agree there's been some fantastic views so far, and more to come, simply because New Zealand is so beautiful. I believe we're about to go over a gorge of some kind. Let's have a look. The Northern Explorer terminates right here in the city of Wellington, the capital city of New Zealand, and one of the smallest capital cities in the world with a population of just over 200,000. Handily enough, Wellington Railway Station is right in the centre of the city, so it makes it easy for getting to hotels or restaurants or picking up a taxi. I'm about to take the Inter-Islander Ferry across the Cook Strait to Picton on the South Island. Okay, let's get checked in. Last name is Hughes, or I have the number if you want it. Are you connected with the train at all for that? The uh, Christchurch train? Yes. Is yeah. there a different train or something? Uh, or? It's with the earlier bookings. Um, I think it's a different company. We send the bags straight on the train for the boat. So it's not the one that's going to yeah. Christchurch? Not, not that one. Okay, yeah. fair enough. Yeah. Oh. All right, thanks. That's my ferry today, the Aratere. I may be mispronouncing that. That would be a shock. We're crossing the Cook Strait between the North and the South Island. The duration of this morning's journey is about three and a half hours. It was a latest check-in for 5.15 a.m. for 6.15 a.m. sailing. That seems a bit of an early cutoff to me. I'm connecting up with a train in Picton to go to Christchurch. And if you're wondering why I got up at stupid o'clock this morning to get this ferry, it's because this was the only ferry with availability for me to be able to get the train today from Picton. You gotta do what you gotta do. You are now welcome to board your ferry through the Dublin Schools and onto gateway number two. Please have your boarding passes available to be collected by reaching the gateway entrance. Thank you. It's hard to know where to sit. It's a little bit windy out here, so hopefully you can hear what I'm saying. This ship is called the Aratere. 
Now, there's a few ships in the fleet and each of them have different features. They were built in different years. This ship, for example, is the only one in the Inter-Islander fleet that has a viewing deck on its bow. The Aratere has a premium lounge, which is available for the rich price of 86 New Zealand dollars for this three and a half hour journey. That sounds a bit expensive to me, but you make your own judgment. I think it's hard to work out if that's good value or not. Perhaps people who would be having a few adult beverages on the trip might think that 86 New Zealand dollars is actually not all that bad for a couple of stiff pours. However, at this time of the morning, it might be better value to go to the cafe and buy your hot breakfast there. If you want to get away from some of the school groups, and who doesn't, frankly, including some of the school teachers, then, then it might be worth every penny of it. There are also private ensuite cabins on board called the Kaitaki cabins. These cost 49 New Zealand dollars, which seems pretty good value as a place to chill out if you need some private time or private access to a bathroom. I'm going to have a walk around on board now to have a look at a few of the features, including the food court, I might get a snack, the bar, which is shut on this journey, and the movie theater, which is available about 30 minutes into the trip for an extra charge. Now, for those of us who like to be connected, there is free Wi-Fi on board. You get 500 megabytes for free. That's possibly a little bit tight, or you can purchase more. There's always an invitation to purchase more. If you read Inter-Islanders Marketing Group, and I do for the purposes of research, they say, Inter-Islander has been connecting Aotearoa, New Zealand and New Zealanders across Cook Strait for over 60 years. And they have. In fact, this was originally the ferry that connected together the different train journeys from North and South Island. There wasn't a connection here until the late 1960s. Inter-Islander and its three roll-on, roll-off rail ferries are owned by Kiwi Rail. The bathrooms here are, well, fine. I'm hoping I don't feel seasick after this. Now, as I said, the bar was closed on this particular trip, although you could use the seating in the bar area if you wanted. The cafe had plenty of cold and some hot options. I was feeling healthy for once. There isn't much in the way of healthy breakfasts available, but there is the old reliable in New Zealand, wheat bix Different to wheat bix but not that different. You can get a full fry up, toast. In fact, they serve like a big hot lunch, that kind of thing. This costs seven fifty. Today we're traveling 50 nautical miles. That's 93 kilometers or 58 regular old miles. And it'll take about three hours to complete today's crossing. I look chirpy, but I don't feel it. There is competition on this route. Blue Bridge is the other ferry operator that plies the Wellington to Picton route, but still Inter-Islander carries roughly 1 million people a year. That's around 230,000 vehicles. There's big changes coming in the next couple of years. There's some work that's going on certainly at the Picton terminal, which means it's quite difficult for people to navigate who have accessibility issues. That's something you need to know about. There's more details on my website about that. And there's the big switch over to electric, which is happening in the coming years as well. Again, more details on the website.
we're entering into the Marlboro Suns. This has been a wonderfully smooth crossing of the Cook Strait. I think it could have been done in way less than three and a half hours, but they said that there was another ship currently in their berth here at Picton. This is Picton over my shoulder. It couldn't have been a better day for it. Thank you. Thanks, take care. Take a seat for now, please. Oh, oh. It is a bit of a schlep to get off, and that's because they're doing works here at the Picton Terminal to prepare for their new hybrid electric boats. This day started very early indeed, because it was the only way of joining the Coastal Pacific Rail Journey that I'm taking later today. Welcome aboard the Coastal Pacific, here in beautiful Aotearoa, New Zealand. Hello from Picton Railway Station, on the northern tip of the South Island of New Zealand. Hi, Hi. I wasn't expecting you to be open. <laughs> Here's the very small number of facts that I know about Picton Railway Station. First of all, it's very close to the ferry terminal. Now that's very good if you're coming down from the North Island because it's literally the next building along from the baggage claim area at the ferry terminal. It was designed to be like that because the ferry is a roll-on, roll-off train service. The current building, which you can see, was built in 1913 and is known as a Troop Special. George Troop was the head of the railway ministry in New Zealand and it was designed to his specification. It replaced a station that had been built in 1874 and it's pretty ornamental in style. The modern building hosts a subway sandwich shop on the left hand side which has free Wi-Fi and the check-in area in the centre. The important part about that check-in area that I didn't realise is that check-in opens at 10am for Kiwi Rail's Coastal Pacific service that I'm taking today which doesn't leave until 1.40pm. That means that you can park your bags and go and enjoy the town. And believe me, it's very pretty. Today's journey is on board the Coastal Pacific, a railway journey that's billed as being one of the most scenic in the world, which brings us between the mountains and the sea of the South Island of New Zealand. There's some special names in there, Picton of course, Blenheim, Kaikoura and onwards towards the city of Christchurch. This long distance journey has been around in one form or another for about 35 years. It was originally branded the Coastal Pacific Express, then was rebranded the Transcoastal, and in its latest identity is the Coastal Pacific. This train uses the familiar AK class carriages built here in New Zealand and a DFB locomotive, which they've briefly decoupled as they set up this train for our service in about an hour. After the dreadful 2016 Kaikoura earthquake, the service was withdrawn entirely and replaced by a bus due to the extent of the damage on the line. After upgrades had reopened, only to close again over COVID, reopening again in 2022 as a weekend service. The trip will take about five and a half hours to get from here in Picton down to Christchurch. See you later. See you, bye bye. Hi. You're my neighbour? Excellent. Hi, how are you? Hopefully I won't disturb you too much with getting up to go to the observation car, but... Don't worry. If I fall asleep, just tap me.
place, gentlemen, very shortly from the arriving in Chukai Forest Station. If you are leaving us at Kai Kora, please make sure that you do take all your belongings with you. When alighting from the train, you may to go back to the luggage van for claiming your luggage, please. I'm excited to see Kaikoura. It's been about 20 years since I was last here, but the weather's so bad, we can't see very far or very much. Welcome to the main toilet. There's toilets in every carriage, of course, but this is the main one for people who need additional access. And for kids, there appears to be some kind of seat down there for children. Is that where you would leave a child while you yourself were using the toilet? Anyway, there is a toilet here, which is great. Rolls of toilet roll, a little sink, a very tired Irishman, and a hot air blower. It's a sanitary bucket and rubbish. Anyway, there's a changing table in here, and I think it's important to know that as well. Everything you need. But, um, That's so good. Are you sure? Do you want me to smile? Yeah, there you go. What's well, for a video? Hello. <laughs> 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 Wonderful, thank you. Everyone's being very friendly. I was on the Northern Explorer yesterday and made like a couple of little videos. They're like, oh, hello. <laughs> Over here. <laughs> you want us to dance? <laughs> Not quite. It's pretty much the same food, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Oh, exactly. Yeah, I didn't like to put it that way, but yeah. Today's snack is tea. And a scone. Now this is a cheese and leek scone, so it's not sweet. Mm. Oh, that's exactly what it is. Right. Warm me up on this cold spring day. There's effectively two classes on board the Kiwi Rail trains. Well, classes probably isn't the right terminology, but there's two different levels that you can pay for. The regular scenic class, which is these beautiful carriages with the huge windows and the panoramic windows above the baggage rail. But on certain trains, they also offer a scenic plus option. I think the seating is identical, but you're provided with food and wine, if that's your choice, from a menu of New Zealand flavors. Now, at the time of booking, that wasn't on offer on the first two of my trips, the Northern Explorer and this coastal Pacific. However, it is available on the third trip that I'm going to do. So keep an eye out for that so we can see what the differences are. The viewing car on board is right at the front of the train, just behind the locomotive. So it gets all the weather for good and for ill. And right now, it's a bit damp. Wow. That locomotive is going through it to get us up this hill. I guess you can't spend every moment of a long journey outside in the viewing carriage unless the weather is fantastic. When it's wet like this, I'm very glad to have a comfortable seat to relax in. And that's what I'm going to do for the next little while.
about an hour and a half away from Christchurch is the lovely little settlement of Akaroa. Well, the day started with blue skies and sunshine. We took a bit of a damp and grey pathway along the coast to get here to Christchurch, where thankfully the rain has finally stopped. Just a couple of minutes until we dock at our beautiful station. Safe travel. Thank you. Yeah. Enjoy. Onwards and upwards. Might see you on the next train. You never know, we're doing the trans. Oh, me too. Oh, you are? Yeah, in two days time. I'll wave if I see you. Five and a half hours, and I'll be glad to see my bed tonight. Hello, hello. I know I said once not forget the name, but it's Patrick. Planet Patrick. Planet. Oh my God. I'm in charming Christchurch on the South Island of New Zealand and about to go inside this railway station to check in for the Transalpine train. It's billed as one of the greatest train journeys in the world. Now, one thing in particular is different about this journey compared to the other two New Zealand trains that I've taken. The Transalpine features an upgraded class the Scenic Plus, which is being rolled out across all Great Journeys New Zealand routes. But it's available on today's train and I've treated myself to the upgrade. Let's look out for the little touches that I hope will make today's experience even more special. Let's discover the Transalpine train together. I went to check in and they're not ready for people yet. So let's talk a bit about this railway station. In fact, it's the third version of the Christchurch railway station. This one being built on, according to Wikipedia, the former Addington Junction. It's the only railway station in Christchurch. There aren't any other services apart from the Great Journeys New Zealand services, the Coastal Pacific, which I came in on, and the Transalpine train, which I'm heading out on today. This building is a bit of a distance from the Central Business District, and it was built in 1993, though it looks a bit more modern inside. Good morning, Hughes. Hughes? Yes. Lovely. You don't want to get uh, two seaters to yourself. Oh, really? Yeah. Good. yeah. What, what? I know, right? <laughs> not too, this not too, third, too busy. Yeah, that's my third journey. Yeah. Well, it's nice to have it. Uh, so this, this bag, there. just on the trolley or next to it. Yeah. Yes, gotcha. Thanks, Enjoy million. All right, I will do. Thank you. There's quite a few people here today, which I wasn't expecting. I usually show up early to do this filming and turns out so did everybody else. They're still getting the carriages ready, so everybody's waiting outside and enjoying some photographs of the train, which is fun. So let's talk about the route on today's train. Today's route will take about five hours to go 139 miles. Now, that feels pretty slow, but there's an important reason why. The train will move from the east coast of the South Island here in Christchurch across the Great Divide, that great spine of mountains that separates the South Island of New Zealand, all the way to Greymouth on the West Coast. So I'm expecting a lot of tunnels, viaducts, and as it suggests, some Alpine mountains. There's five stops, including this one at Christchurch, taking in Springfield, Arthur's Pass, Moana, and then the final stop for today of Greymouth. From what I could tell in lining up to check in, at least a third of people are traveling across today and coming back to Christchurch. That's because there isn't a huge amount of infrastructure in Greymouth for onward travel. Greymouth is a great jumping off point for some fascinating places along the west coast, including Fox Glacier and Franz Joseph Glacier, and onwards to Queenstown. Hopefully we can get on board pretty soon and have a look at the seat and amenities in Scenic Plus. Today I'm in carriage P, which I think stands for plus in the scenic plus designation and it's besides the scenic car which is this one now it's quite cold at the moment in new zealand and this is open air so that's why i'm wearing a sweater hi how are you Lovely, road for today. Lovely, thank you very much. Hello. I just got on board and people 
are losing their rag. There's those fancy tables up the front which are set up. And then back here, we're in these aeroplane style seats. And they're going to serve food on the drop down tables. It's not as fancy. One lady has called for the cabin manager saying that she spent nearly a thousand dollars for her and her husband. And it's not as advertised because all of the advertising is the fancy tables that are set up nicely. But we've all spent the same amount of money to get the same thing. It's not ideal. I am interested in the difference between the two. Yeah. Um, so it is in the fine print somewhere, but... Yeah. It's on the website, so uh, right now this is the carriage we have. It does feel like two different cars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apologies for that. And oh, no, you don't need to apologize for it. Hopefully you enjoy yourself. I will. I will. Uh, Thanks uh, anyway. Thank you for stopping. So have a good time. I'm sure about it. Carriage with the outdoor viewing deck. Sweet. Take some lovely photos along the way. We do have commentary you can listen to along the way. So those headphones at your seat, they just plug into the centre console. Good morning, good morning ladies and gentlemen. A very warm welcome on board your Transal plane this morning. Bound for Arthur's Pass, Moana and Greymouth. For our Senate Plus guest seated towards the rear of the service, you have Stacey, Sasha, Gracie and Claudine looking after you. For our Senate Plus pa uh, passengers, your crew will be through shortly to introduce you to the offerings on board this morning if they haven't already done so. Don't worry, they're made of asbestos. It's all good. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, would you like any hot drinks to start with? Yes, please. May I have a long black with a little uh, milk, please? With some milk on the side? Yes, yeah. I'd love a glass of the sparkling wine if that's okay. Yeah, sure, I can do that. Lovely, we'll be out with that shortly. No worries, thank, thank you. you. You must have paid for a saving plus ticket. <laughs> I'm convinced of it. I'm doing the return today. today. Okay. You were on two of my trains this week. Yes, I was. Yeah. So were you a blogger or a blogger? Yes, both. This is a, a not fancy oh, setup trying. at all. Hello. Oh, I've got um, a long black. black with milk. Yeah. Thank you very much. Awesome. And the milk there, Perfect, thank you. The sparkling wine is also for me. Sparkling wine is also for me. I assume, thank you. Perfect, thank you. So, are you staying over? In Greymouth? Yeah. Yeah. I'm heading on to Queenstown after this. Yeah, I'm not in Queenstown tomorrow. But flying. Flying, yeah. A lot of people don't want to put up with the pain of taking a coach. Which is what I'm doing. You can take a coach from Greymouth to uh, Queenstown. Yes, but I do it because it would be easier to fly. But I do it because it's an, an added More journey. To see, yeah. yeah, it's another video, right? So, yeah. Well, cheers to whoever I'm cheersing to. If you do head out there folks, please be a safety in mind. We will be approaching those tunnels very quickly and without warning. Please keep all arms and camera equipment well behind those safety railings. Thank you. Very beautiful. I have to say that apart from the food service, the carriage, including this bathroom, is identical to the scenic comfort class, which I've taken on the other train journeys. Just the same. 
I've come outside to enjoy this fantastic viewing car. And one of the perks of the Scenic Plus class is that we have this car all to ourselves. There's another one for Scenic Comfort passengers, which is great. It just means that this one's a little bit quieter. So about two hours into the service, I have to say the staff are excellent. The food has been delicious. And that boysenberry smoothie was so tart and gorgeous. There has been a little bit of an upset with the passenger who got super annoyed about the different kinds of table that were set up for breakfast or lunch. In that some people are seated at what seems like a plush, first-class luxury product, and everybody else is in the regular old seats that are included in every carriage, including scenic comfort, and those are comfortable, by the way. But you're just eating your fancy food off a fold-down table on what's effectively an airplane-style seat. The two things do feel different. And really, Great Journeys New Zealand should price them differently if you're getting two very different kinds of experience. Having said that, it's a very comfortable product. I'm enjoying the food and the service. And apart from that one grumble, everything else is probably worth experiencing. If only there was some way of guaranteeing that you got the nicer seat without having to be a bit of a you-know-what about it. If you're leaving us here today, we would like to thank you for travelling with us on board the Transalpine. Now, if you're returning with us this afternoon, I ask that you meet me back no later than 4pm and meet me in carriage B, and I will issue you your tickets. For those of you travelling all the way through to Moana and Greymouth, this is your one chance for a stretch of the legs, folks, but it is only a brief five minute stop. So we do ask that you stay on the platform. Don't wander away with the large number of guests leaving us here. This is Arthur's Pass. It's the highest point that we're achieving on this particular journey. That's a beautiful part of the Transalpine train. Let's talk about the audio commentary on board. It's something which is a bit of a feature. Great Journeys New Zealand make a lot of it. And rightly so. They provide you with some headsets which you can plug in. And then when something of interest is going to be said, a little ding sound is made. And a piece of audio commentary is provided. It's very interesting and a way to while away some of the time while you're looking at some of these fabulous landscapes. talking about the geology and type of jade stone that's found up here in this area. It's very interesting.
<laughs> so lunch has just arrived. Let's try it out. I have a chicken salad and some sandwiches. Mm. It's light and refreshing. It came with sandwiches. Mm. <coughs> it smells good. Mm. Nice and fresh. I'm going to enjoy this. When it comes to whether I think you should book this train or not, I think you shouldn't. I think you shouldn't book it in Scenic Plus. I think you should do it, but do it in the regular carriage and save yourself the couple of hundred dollars difference that there is between Scenic Comfort and Scenic Plus. too far away from my final destination of Greymouth. If you're returning with us this afternoon and didn't receive your return ticket in parachute or joined us along the way, please make sure to collect your new boarding pass inside the station as your seat will be different from the ones you came over with. If everyone else leaving us here today in Scenic and Scenic Plus, on behalf of myself, Phoebe, the rest of your lovely crew, would like to thank you for travelling with us on board the Transalpine. I'd never done the train journeys okay. before. That's yeah, they did those. Yeah. Yeah. Do, this do, is by do far the best. This is, oh, yeah, fabulous. Isn't for it? sure. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Asha. Thank you, Thank Thank you Claudine. Salamat yeah. Take care. Bye. Good to meet you. And that is that for my third train journey. This is by far the best one to do. Although I would say, don't pay the extra for Scenic Plus. I'm in Greymouth in New Zealand. I arrived into Greymouth yesterday and decided to enjoy the sights and sounds of Greymouth for a night before heading on to my eventual destination of Queenstown. Now Greymouth is on the west coast of the South Island and there aren't a ton of options when you get here off that transalpine train. In fact, a lot of people who take the train journey decide to go back to Christchurch from which it originates on the same day making it a 10 hour journey. However, Queenstown is further southwest, so I had to come up with a different way of getting there. I suppose you could drive or take a camper van as long as you don't mind paying a fee for dropping off your car or a camper van in a different location. You could go back to Christchurch and fly, or you could do what I'm doing, which is to take a coach or a bus all of the way along the west coast. In fact, here it comes right now. This journey is so long, it's going to take two days. <laughs> no worries. I'll just turn it on and drop it down. A bit of a... Okay, learn lessons, hey. Put <laughs> them out of the way. What's your surname? Hughes. H-U-G-H-E-S. Patrick. Yes. Glowworm, yeah. if it matters. Yeah, yeah. you're a glowworm, cool. Yeah. The other people go in there. Uh, just the, that one there. Just that one? Yeah, if this one's okay to put on. Thank you. We're about ready for the off. Everyone's on board. Looks like all of the luggage is stowed. So hopefully it won't be too long until we're underway. About three and a half hours in today's journey from here to Franz Joseph Glacier. Well, Franz Joseph Town, which will be fun. And we're off.
folks, this is Hoka Tuka. This is the last town before Franz Joseph. Last main town anyway. Couple of little wee ones. You blink and you miss those. Couple of shops you might want to go and look at. Uh, there's the Greenstone Hanamu shop just there on the corner in front of us on the left. There's another one down the side street up here on the left which has a factory inside. Thank you very much. Oh, that's I wasn't expecting that we'd have any time to play with, but we're stopping in this lovely town of Hockey Tika for about 40 minutes. Time to pop into the supermarket and grab a snack, or have a little walk around and look at the beach. I think we should go to the beach. I have nowhere in particular to be in a rush. So to have a few minutes to stop and take a walk to the beach is a pretty good outcome for something which I thought was just going to be a bus trip. It's worth, it's worth knowing about. <laughs> I didn't. I don't have my Factor 50 on, so I'm going to head back. You can't go over there and look at the... Uh the marble gold uh, gardens because uh, we haven't got time to do that so we have to carry on. The largest gold nugget found in New Zealand was found here in this town that weighed 3.09 kilos. little town is in the Guinness Book of Records. Back in 1931 there was an Australian man by the name of Guy Menzies. He was a keen aviator, loved aeroplanes, so much so that he built himself one. He built a biplane, it's a double winged plane, and he decided to fly from Sydney, Australia to New Zealand. He was heading over to our left to Christchurch, but unfortunately as he came close to the land here on our right, he came into some bad weather and had to crash land his plane into some swamp. He survived, so did his plane. Got in the World Guinness Book of Records as being the first person to fly solo across the Tasman from Sydney, Australia. We're about 25 minutes away from Franz Joseph. We've just about 15 minutes to go until we hit Franz Joseph, the town that is, not the glacier. This is the kind of trip that lends itself to a nice nap. This is the first of two days of traveling by bus. Tomorrow's journey will be more like eight and a half hours. I wonder will I get a sore or a butt from that? But the landscape is captivating. Just like that, we're here. Oh, that's me right there. The, the blue one? Yeah, please. Thank you very much. Right. See you in the morning. No worries, yep, see you in the morning. Hello, how are you? Thank you very much. Very pleased to be here. You like some candy? Oh, I am good for candy. I'm Patrick. My glasses are soaked. I've met a couple of different people walking back down on the trail and a couple of them seem confused about exactly where the viewpoint is and whether you can walk to it in a reasonable amount of time. Hi. One guy just said that he walked four kilometers out and then four back. 
right up to the end point where you can see the glacier and it's so foggy up there that you can't see anything. I'm never quite sure where the most Instagrammable spots are. But I saw a group of young Chinese people over by the bridge taking photographs. I thought, well, they must have worked out that this is a great spot. But they were right, it was a good one. Time to prepare for tomorrow's very, very long journey. Eight and a half hours from here at Franz Joseph all the way to Queenstown. One of my top three places in the world. It's hard to believe we're back. The bus is here and we're heading all the way to Queenstown. It's going to take about eight hours. I stayed in a hostel last night. I'm not sure that's entirely wise for a gentleman of my years, but I met some lovely people, particularly from Germany. There seem to be a lot of Germans visiting New Zealand at this time of the year. Don't know why, but it's all positive. Anywho, back on the bus, eight hours to Queenstown. Stop wittering at this time of the morning, Patrick. Goodbye. Hey, good morning folks, welcome on board this great uh, site service to Wanaka and Queenstown. I'm going to have a little chat to you once I've picked up all our passengers over Fox Cross here. We're able to pick up over there. So. And we're off. Let's set the clock at 8 a.m. Let's see what time we get into Queenstown. First stop is going to be picking up some more passengers at the Fox Glacier. And we've got a nice long stop for lunch as well. It's a bit of a damp morning, but there's some mystery in those mountains. No wonder people want to use this area for filmmaking. Maybe stop reversing. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> not even park there. <laughs> Think they've worked it out? That guy looks so cranky. The guy in the black car. He parked in the bus stop and then was cranky when the bus pulled up. So this is the first stop, Fox Glacier. It's 8.30. 30 minutes uphill and down Dale. And uh, a while until we stop for coffee. Okay, good morning everyone, we'll start again. My name's John, welcome on board this great sights slash intercity service to Wanaka and Queenstown. Once we leave the salmon farm at say quarter past 10, we head to another stop that I'll stop at, this place called uh, Knight's Point. Then we head on down to the little town of Haast. We'll just go and do a quick check there, see if they get on at the bus stop. Again, we stop right in front of the uh, outlet restaurant, so they can use the restroom. We'll stop there for five minutes. Then we head about 55 kilometres inland into the mountain, Mount Spiring, right up to a place called uh, Pleasant Flat. And we use that car park to uh, wait for the Queenstown bus to come over the mountain to us. And uh, if you stay on this bus to want to go to Queenstown, we just swap drivers. So you have a Queenstown driver. Time check, it's 10 past nine. 
We're going to make a number of stops on this eight and a half hour trek. Toilet breaks, coffee breaks, lunch break, swapping over the driver break, and like this one, a beauty break, so we can enjoy stunning landscapes. What a cool spot, so beautiful. Those trees back here, wow. This is Bruce Bay. I didn't know about it. Totally a place to, totally a place to come and like do a hike or something. Gorgeous. Are they on scale? Oh, I can't see it. I think it will be smoking heavy, Becky. Quickly, he popped out and he disappeared. So, a wee bit closer to shore than I expected. <laughs> Lots of flies, too. We have 220 on board, counting flies. <laughs> yeah, it gets worse in the summer. I was never anywhere worse than the red center of Australia, so. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I see it on TV when I watch, uh, when I watch that Aussie gold hunters. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's flies. a nightmare. Oh. Time check, 9.35 a.m. It's only been a few minutes since we stopped at Bruce Bay. I was just saying to somebody else who's on the bus with me, if we were to absolutely cane it and leg it between Franz Joseph and Queenstown, we could do it in a much shorter time, probably five and a half, six hours, something like that. I suppose the thing is, this is like a whole day trip and having regular stops makes it less unendurable, I suppose. Anyway, I'm off to get a cup of coffee. Couple of chunky guys in there. Yeah, it's a big trap down there, yeah. Another one over here as well, on the edge of the pie and the black eel. Oh yeah, there's the black eel. Good early to that. My go-to because we're in New Zealand is of course a flat white. Skinny. Nice. Quick time check, 10.40 a.m. and we just arrived at a place called Knight's Point. Very charming little viewpoint. The gentleman beside me could see some seals on the sand, but my eyesight, I'm afraid, isn't good enough to be able to see them at such a distance. If you look all the way to the left at the sand, you might be able to see some seals. Ah, with your camera, you go, uh, with a zoom, we can see some seals. the woman with the hair from the train. Oh, See, it's standing outside. She was the woman who was complaining on the train. She was so rude to the train operator. I get the point. I mean, we all, yeah. you know. Time check, 11.10 a.m. And this is Hast Township. It is but a toilet stop. The bus driver was just saying that from this town, which is called Hast, named after the geologist Hast, that you can take a helicopter from here down to Milford Sound, which is one of the typical places that people will visit as a day trip from Queenstown. Now, from here to Milford Sound by car would take about nine hours. It's single track roads in some places, and it's quite far on that windy road. But from here, by helicopter, it's 45 minutes straight. So you can see the appeal of doing it that way. But apparently it costs about 525 New Zealand dollars one way. Could be worth it in the right circumstances. All right, back on the bus. Make sure you hop back on the right bus, otherwise you'll be going back to France, seriously. Thanks for coming with us today. There's uh, restrooms here if you need to use restroom. And uh, 
just on our left here as we go around the corner there's a five minute forest walk if you want to walk through the forest for five minutes on your way to the bus. How long to that bus comes from? Yeah, the bus he should be here in about five or ten minutes. Time check, it's 12 noon and we're at Pleasant Flats. Now, another bus is about to arrive from Queenstown and our driver, John, is getting off our bus and getting onto that bus and driving it onwards to Franz Josef. Our bus continues to Queenstown, but with the other driver. So we switch drivers is the long and the short of it. Anywho, they're not here yet, so we get five minutes to enjoy the sunshine and take photographs and wish her at a camera. It's not the hardest thing to keep a pot of on, no, on exactly. the go, but... Yeah, yeah. And you'll notice the difference in altitude of the lake levels between Lake Kawea and Lake Wanaka. Lake Kawea is about 300 metres higher up. Uh, the dam now, called the Clyde Dam, it's our largest dam in New Zealand um, and it provides about 50% of the electricity that is used throughout the country. Virtual. Time check, 3.30 p.m. Eight and a half hours into this journey, holy Mary. Time for a pee and only one more hour to go. Honestly, I hadn't even realized that there was a toilet on board the bus. There was no announcement made about it. And as far as I know, people haven't been using it because we've had frequent stops for, I guess, proper restrooms, if that makes sense. What I'm leading up to talking about is that there's nothing particularly special about this coach, but it's been very comfortable. Even though this total journey will be about nine and a half hours, it hasn't felt like that. In fact, the more luxurious train journeys that I've been doing in New Zealand were more tiring for a similar amount of time. Maybe coaches stimulate the senses in a slightly different way to the trains. Who knows? Back on the bus for the final hour to Queenstown. So the Tarau Gorge down on Oleithla, a very famous river uh, because in the 1800s uh, miners found a gold in that river uh, and it started the Central Otago Gold Rush which is uh, a lot of Chinese and European uh, and Australian but gold prospectors have made their way over here in the hopes of becoming rich. be crossing the Shotover River, uh, which is the other main river in the Queenstown area. Uh, it just joins up here with the Cow River and goes to Cromwell. Uh, very famous for its jet boating.
Thank you, Fergus. Thank you. Enjoy the holiday. I will do. And that's a wrap on this two-day trip by bus to Queenstown from Greymouth. A total of 13 and a half hours on board. Wow. I'm very glad to have a few days here in Queenstown, which I think I've said more than once before is one of my favorite towns in the world. I'm going to wrap up today's video with some views of Queenstown that I hope you'll enjoy. Until the next episode of Planet Patrick, take care. Bye-bye.